We welcome you to AT&T Stadium, Arkansas, and Texas A&M set to go. Texas A&M won the toss. They elected to defer. Joe Tessitore, Greg McElroy, Katie George with you here in Arlington, Texas. 79th meeting between these two. A&M had won nine straight up until last year. Caden Davis to get the night started, kicking away A.J. Green back to return for the Hogs. He will let it sail deep into the end zone, and that will bring out K.J. Jefferson. 313 total yards of offense per game. That's number two in the SEC, number 16 overall in the nation. Right? Yeah, he's the centerpiece of this offense that is going to try to establish the line of scrimmage. They want to run the football. That's who they are, but do not get rocked to sleep with that run game. K.J. Jefferson also an elite downfield thrower with an excellent receiving core to lean on as well. Raheem Rocket Sanders in the backfield with KJ. Play action to start the game. Jefferson able to get it complete for a gain of nine at Jaden Hazelwood. Antonio Johnson with the tackle for the Aggies. It's a tempo offense here for Arkansas that will try to catch you off guard once they get that first first down. Sanders will go ahead for a gain of two and a half yards. As Chris Russell made the tackle, Damani Richardson tried to strip it away at the end. It's a first down for Arkansas. It's a Texas A&M defense that has been excellent throughout the first part of this season. The offense has had their growing pains, but the defense has been playing at a high level all year. This is Jefferson keeping it and getting it close to the 40-yard line. He's a big body at 6'3", 242 pounds. Tackle by Russell. See Jaden Hazelwood coming off, reaching for that shoulder. Jefferson went for five yards on that run. Third down, five, empty look for the Hogs. Three man rush, and it's incomplete. He was trying to go over the middle to Jackson. And this is a good job here in the middle of the defense, just spying K.J. Jefferson and falling underneath this slant. As you can see right there, Edger and Cooper just reading the eyes of the quarterback, almost falling into it and causing the throw to be offline. Six foot five freshman punter Max Fletcher is going to reverse rotation this as it checks up but not a long punt at all as it is downed at the 34-yard line. Just a 25-yard punt for Fletcher. Max Johnson, his second start at AM after transferring from LSU. Of course, he came in last week replacing Haynes King as the starting quarterback, and he was able to lead them to the win against Miami. He didn't do anything special. What he did do, though, is he took care of the football. He was smart. And he didn't take any unnecessary risks. So I think he's steady at the position, a veteran player that's played a lot of football, and the right guy for the position at the time when this offense has really kind of struggled to get any consistency going this year. Gives to A-Chain. A-Chain out to the 40. Well, Greg, Max Johnson told me he just wanted to bring a confidence and a calmness to the quarterback position, and he did that. His teammates said his poise was contagious. The way he played in the pocket, got the ball out under pressure, he did it with ease. Now, he said, we need to score more than 17 points, but it was a good starting point as he stabilized things at that QB spot. Jimbo Fisher, his fifth season at A&M. Second and five, flag comes down. Johnson with plenty of time comes across the field, but well beyond a chain. Ken Williamson heads up this SEC crew.
Illegal shift. Offense. Two players moving in the same time. And the lottery shift in five seconds. Five yard penalty. The fifth second down. There have been a number of examples of Texas A&M getting off schedule in the early parts of this year. Here's an example here. They have a nice positive first down play and then they back it up with the pre-snap penalty. They got to stop with some of these issues, whether it be lost yardage plays or pre-snap penalties because it's very difficult to make it up as the defenses get better that they're going to see in the SEC. Nia Smith is now in the backfield with A-chain, second and ten. A-chain with Smith as the lead blocker and somehow able to slither his way just short to the 40-yard line. Chick-fil-A impact players look this way tonight, Greg. And Texas A&M, their impact players on offense, very simple. Devon A-chain, starting running back, big hitter, home run hitter there in the backfield with great track star speed. Anaya Smith, versatile slot receiver, and then defensively, for the Arkansas Razorbacks, Drew Sanders been off the charts good, moving him around in the middle of the defense. And Miles Slusher back from an injury to help shore up a pass defense that has really struggled the last few weeks. And him facing the first third down of the night. Johnson. Pressure, and it gets to him, and it's Drew Sanders again. Came in with five and a half sacks, and it was tied for the national lead, and he's able to get to Max Johnson. And this is a great job just coming off the left-hand side, one-on-one, -on -one, working against Zoon, the left tackle. Goes long arm with the left arm, and there's really nothing that Max Johnson could do. Sanders just gets the left tackle, walked back, and he drops him for a big fourth, third down stop. Constantino with a knuckler downfield, and Stevens is going to let it bounce, and it does so just inside the 30-yard line. So Drew Sanders keeps up his steady work this season. The third down sack will be back to AT&T Stadium right after this short break. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Subway. Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Beautiful setting as the sun sets to our west here. Rays coming into the side of AT&T Stadium. Second offensive possession for Arkansas against that AM defense. Statistically, a very good AM defense. Ninth nationally in scoring defense. First drive was just four plays, 15 yards, minute 25, and a punt. And as Sanders, tough running, churning the legs out to the 37 yard line. Second and four. And that'll make for a third and one as Sanders gets it to the 40. You can see the point of emphasis here for Arkansas. Just get the ball to Sanders and test this young defensive line for the AM Aggies. Third down and one. We go with a short inside handoff, stacked up, but an extra push. And that surge will move the chains. Antonio Johnson was the first to meet Rocket Sanders, who did go ahead for two yards on third and one. And the Bryles, outstanding offensive coordinator. Does a great job of creating advantages and angles in the run game. Of course, comes from that Baylor tree, where it was really about the downfield passing attack, but has really transitioned beautifully at Arkansas to a run first style of attack. First down, K.J. Jefferson to pass. And now he's going to tuck, run, and get a chunk play out of it. And he is so effective when he gets those big wheels going down to the 32-yard line, finally run down by Edrin Cooper. 26-yard run by Jefferson. And you're going to see the guys leave like this. There's nothing open, wide open. Take off. He does immediately with a ton of green grass. It creates a big play for the Razorbacks. And now they go with the receiver screen. This is Jackson. Jackson inside the 10. And touchdown, Hogs. 32-yard touchdown, Jackson.
Keytron Jackson with the big play to get the night going. And really nice execution. You're going to see the linebacker immediately follow the cross action on the handoff, which means just one on one for the left tackle, Luke Jones, to get a piece of Richardson. Then you know Keytron Jackson with the speed is going to find the pylon. Just really well executed by Arkansas offense. Thank you very much, Dave. And we got a whole lot of Woo Pig early on here at AT&T. Moments ago, Keytron Jackson, 32 yards in the score for the Hogs, Greg. Perfectly executed by Arkansas. You're going to see cross action. The linebacker is going to follow, which allows one on one with the left tackle, Luke Jones, against Richardson, the safety. He gets just enough of him. The Keytron Jackson puts on the Jets and finds the pylon. Just beautiful misdirection. You fake the run to the right, you throw the tunnel back to the left and allow the receiver to take off. Excellent drive there by the Razorbacks. You call these hogs now, you better call them top 10. They've got momentum. Number 10, Arkansas. Number 23, Texas A&M. Of course, Max Johnson, his second start, took over from Haynes King a week ago, came up with a win against Miami. Playing game, offense. Well, guys, Sam Pittman came over to KJ Jefferson just now, and he said, you started that with your legs. We're going to continue to run you. He told us in our meetings they wanted to get him on the ground early, and then obviously good things happen after that. Boy, and that big quarterback gets going 6'3", 242 pounds, opens up the passing game. He did so with the screen to Jackson 32 yards later, seven zip hogs. AM's first drive was just three plays, negative three yards, and a punt. Here's a chain, and he is gobbled up and tackled for a loss. In the backfield was Miles Slusher, and they're happy to have him back. Just a great job by Slusher here. Gets blocked, fights through the contact. You're going to see him just coming right off the edge. Tries to get hit by the inside, tries to get hit by the outside. As a result, neither guy can get a piece of him, and Slusher drops a chain for the loss. Just an excellent play and it's nice to have him back in a secondary that's been reeling the last few weeks. He was injured week one against Cincinnati trying to tackle a big tight end. Second and 19. Johnson has time. Looks to check down at the 20 yard line and able to get it to A chain. So it'll be third down from there. So far early on Arkansas has done a good job of getting Texas A&M a little bit off schedule. Just a couple drives but both third down attempts for Texas A&M have been third and long. Those are not down in distances that you can do well against when you're going against the nation's best team in regards to sacks. Arkansas coming into the day, 17 sacks, leads the country already with one on the opening drive. That was Drew Sanders, the Alabama transfer, who was able to get to Max Johnson on the first drive. Third down and 12. Four-man rush. Johnson, Sanders tracking him again. Johnson gets free. Going to tuck, run, dive for the line again. Let's see where they mark him. And he will be just short. That was Slusher again who made the tackle as he came to find Johnson. Amazing job there by Johnson. Just incredible effort. Thought he was going to be dropped in the backfield. Looked like Sanders is going to drop him. He makes a miss. Does a really good job of extending for the line to gain. Just comes up a little bit short, as you can see. I mean, he is almost brought down in the backfield. And a nice open field tackle there by Slusher. Two nice plays by Slusher on that drive. Second three and out for the Aggies. Constantino punts away, skies it, and is fielded with a fair catch at the 21-yard line. 
KJ Jefferson and the Hogs offense back out there after this short break. Little Lou Pig celebrating early. Keytron Jackson had the 32 yard touchdown to get the night going for number 10 Arkansas. This turnaround in recent years <laughs> for Arkansas has been phenomenal. And you look at their offense, they got that big old line that you'd expect. They got the big quarterback who's over athletic, right. and they can run the ball. Yeah, they can. And I, what I like about it is they can do it in a traditional sense, no doubt. First of all, don't sleep on the receivers. Either. No, no, right? no. So no we just found good. that out. <laughs> these are really good wideouts, too, and they open up the run game, too, because you can't just say, hey, we're going to just put all our safeties up near the box, because if you do, Arkansas can also throw it over your head, but this is a rushing attack that can hit you in so many different ways. They can hit you on the perimeter. They can hit you on the edge. They can hit you going downhill, and they can hit you when it's a called pass play because of K.J. Jefferson's scrambling ability. It's so difficult to account for this run game. A.J. Green now in the backfield with K.J. Jefferson. Remember last year in this game, he had a sensational touchdown. He's going to lead block here for K.J., and this is exactly what Jefferson can do. And on that scoring drive, Greg, to your point, they had four straight runs for 37 yards, and then the one screen pass that went for 32 with the score. Yeah, and it's interesting from a and the first drive, mostly zone coverage, where they're keeping their eyes defensively in the backfield, not really allowing for the quarterback run. That second drive, mostly man, so it'll be interesting to see what they end up doing moving forward. Here's Green, as Green goes ahead and moves the chains on second and four. Good play calling and balance from Kendall Bryles early on. There is the play caller. DJ Durkins, the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M. They met up a year ago when Durkin was at Ole Miss. Kendall put up 51 points in that matchup. Here's Green again as he goes for nine yards. Mentioned last year he had a sensational 48-yard touchdown catch. Wheeling out of the backfield, made four Aggies miss. Had a great spin move. One of the plays of the game in that Arkansas win. Second and one. And he's getting good work here. A couple yards and another first down. And you, look at Arkansas. With the tackle. you look at Arkansas, I mean, it's who they are, too. They utilize that tempo. They're not crazy hyperspeed, but, man, they got it in there. And right now, when they have momentum, you'll see Kendall Browse start to ramp it up a little faster and a little faster, just like he's doing right now. Jefferson, look at the time he has. But good coverage downfield as he tried to line it to Warren Thompson. It goes incomplete. I think one thing that's really different about K.J. Jefferson this year, a lot's been made about his weight. As you can see, Kendall Bryles, he's an extension of his quarterback. He plays the game from the sideline as well as any coordinator in college football. But I think a big thing is his downfield passing accuracy. He was good last year. He's really taken the next step as a passer. Great command and great confidence. Tackled for a loss. Green is taken down. Great play by Chris Russell. It's just a great play here by Russell. You're going to see him. He's just unblocked, and he makes the play. Trying to read him a little bit. He kind of turns quickly. Should have been a poor read there from K.J. Jefferson, but an excellent job by Russell dropping the back. Third down and 14. Jefferson going deep, wide open, and waiting for it and diving into the end zone is Warren Thompson. Oh, my, call those hogs. And this is a defense that's basically designed saying, hey, you cannot throw it over our head. But you're going to see this guy come and grab the safety, that piece of cake over the top. Really nicely done as it takes a half second to develop. And a little late to identify. But a nice throw by K.J. Jefferson as they get behind the defense. K.J. Jefferson. He had time to wind it up. He had time to rip away. And he said, why not? Big 84 is striding. Let's do this in Dallas.
ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Subway. Try the all-new Subway Series menu. Your pick of 12 irresistible subs. Of course, plenty of Arkansas connections with the Dallas Cowboys and this place. Jerry Jones was out there greeting Hogs fans earlier tonight. Let's go to the studio to Matt. Joe Tess, good evening. Our All-State Mayhem moment. I got a couple of them for you. First, after recovering an onside kick, Florida an opportunity at the end of the game with Tennessee. Anthony Richardson picked off just the second win against Florida since 2005 for the Tennessee Volunteers. And in Lubbock, in overtime, ball game. Texas Tech beats Texas in Lubbock for the first time since 2008. Just a wild 330 window, gentlemen. No doubt about it. I'll tell you, that Texas Tech program is finding some early momentum with that staff, aren't they? Yeah, it's been fun to watch that group. Bad snap. Max Johnson able to secure it. And salvages it before he's taken down by Bumper Pool. Katie. Well, guys, after the App State loss, Jimbo Fisher said the only thing that's no longer on the table is an undefeated season. Our goals are still very much in front of us. We can win our division. We can win an SEC championship. And we can get to a college football playoff if we learn from our mistakes. we got to have some urgency. Urgency was felt in the Miami win, and you can feel the urgency on the sideline as Jimbo Fisher continues to talk to his QB, Max Johnson. Former LSU starting quarterback transfers to AM, his second start with the Aggies. Second and 10, gets it out quickly and gets it complete to his tight end, Green. As Green tries to power his way closer to the line to gain. Johnson's done a nice job, I feel like, for the most part in his entire career, being accurate with the football. He can make every throw underneath, down the field, intermediate. The one thing that he has had to take the next step with is pressure recognition, understanding when his protection is overloaded, understanding when he doesn't have enough blockers, he's got to get rid of the football. Sometimes he's tried to beat guys with athleticism. It's hard to do that time in, time out in this league. So still a work in progress for a guy that's good and played a lot of football, but a really high ceiling. I formation with Johnson as the tailback on third and two. Play action off of it as he's able to get it to crown over. A flag is down. We will check on that. Tackle by Slusher. So they go I formation and they leak out the fullback, number 24, Ernest Crownover. Illegal shift, offense, two players moving at the same time with a lot of second. Five yard penalty, okay, third down. Third penalty on the Aggies tonight. And you're going to see it as the motion starts to work to the left. I mean, you're going to see both backs slightly move. Watch, there it is. Two guys move at the same time. This is what AM just continues to do. I mean, just one mistake after another. You have a fresh set of downs. You convert easily on the third and short. Now you back yourself up because of a self-inflicted mistake. And you just can't continue to do that. And it feels like that's been the theme here in the first month of the season for the Aggies. So out with the big body backs and in with the speedy A chain with third and seven. Pressure right up the middle against Johnson. Gets it free, but it's incomplete as it was low intended for Evan Stewart. Bumper pool was coming in on Max Johnson. And there's this little twist right here in the middle, and bumper pool is going to come around unblocked. We just told you, Max Johnson struggled with understanding when his protection is overloaded. Right there, his protection's overloaded internally. He's late to diagnose it. As a result, he has to move and misses his target. That is now three straight, three and outs. Constantino on to punt again. They haven't seen a first down yet. Stevens calls for the fair catch. And driven and he muffs it. He muffs it. And it appears that Arkansas was able to jump on it. Bryce Stevens, redshirt freshman who had the go-ahead 82-yard punt return touchdown last week in the game against Missouri State. Our crew is like the muffed punt aren't, crew. Aren't we? we Every week. That's what, four in three weeks? At least. <laughs> oh, this one, too. Play places. Very awkward. Really, really bad. Just moved late, got out away from his body. It's McAdoo lucky. who recovers it, correct? Yeah, lucky that McAdoo was right there to hop on it. A little lucky, too. It appeared like Johnson really wasn't ready for it. Said he ended up in a little bit more athletic position. He probably could have hopped on as well. Quincy McAdoo with the recovery there. He's a true freshman 
wide receiver who's getting time on special teams. Big drive here from the Aggie defense. Arkansas scored a consecutive possessions has really figured out what DJ Durkin's trying to do defensively. Rocket Sanders in the backfield with KJ Jefferson who has the two big touchdown passes to start this game. Going to keep it on the ground with Sanders and he is stacked up that DJ Durkin defense for AM. They came in ranked ninth nationally in scoring defense only given up 8.7 points per game ninth nationally also in passing defense only given up 147 yards per game there is the veteran defensive coordinator former head coach at Maryland as well well traveled in Florida and Michigan Ole Miss as a DC second and nine he has time again and tried to connect on the in cut to Thompson who had the 56 yard touchdown catch moments ago but it'll be third and nine so an opportunity for A&M the huge down here for DJ Durkin's defense but the big key when playing against a quarterback like KJ Jefferson is yes it's fun to rush the passer everyone wants to make that third down sack but my you better be very very careful about how aggressive you get because the second you get past the quarterback he's going to take off and run Make sure you're really smart about that QB scramble as you come after him here. Already has three rushes for 36 yards. Third down and nine. Jefferson. That goes nowhere. Well defensed by AM. Thompson only able to get a yard that time as they were swarming to the ball. Good job there by Dirk and decided to go with a little quarterback spy. Had Cooper basically just tracking KJ Jefferson. As he broke contain, he forced the throw early. Some nice adjustments there by the Aggie defense. Arkansas's first three and out of the night. Fletcher to punt away. And it is a knuckler that's going towards the sideline with a fair catch by Smith at the 33 yard line. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN will be the classic rivalry. Yankees host the Red Sox tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. And coverage begins at 6 with baseball tonight, Sunday Night Countdown. there got to be something here for the Aggie offense. The first few drives, they just completely shot themselves in the foot. Bad snaps, pre-snap penalties. Get back to running the football and give yourself a chance. Johnson pulls it and it's incomplete again he was trying to get it to Stewart the true freshman who was one of the four true freshmen who was announced as a late suspension last week prior to the Miami game well, the mishandled snap there a little bit by Max Johnson kind of bobbled it there at the very beginning kind of caused him to be a little late with that throw and Watch, you see him just kind of mishandle it just a little bit, caused him to be just a hair late as he puts it into the belly of the running back and might have caused the throw to be a little off target as well. Smith and A-Chain both in the backfield here on second and ten. A-Chain. Will wiggle his way out to the 38-yard line. It'll be third down from there. Anytime you see A-Chain grab that football, you kind of hold your breath for a second because he puts that foot oh. on the ground and you can see the accelerators. It doesn't take as much to bring him down as some backs of the past, but my goodness, the speed is on display. Your big third down for the Aggie offense. Got to start putting some drives together. Coming to the final minute of this first quarter and they're looking for their first first down. And a timeout is going to be called by Texas A&M. You know, it's interesting. We had this discussion, Greg, about A&M and the opportunity that lies ahead. Obviously, the shocking upset loss to App State. But then you get right in front of you the bounce back opportunity and they deliver. It wasn't the prettiest thing against yeah. Miami, but the bottom line is you got it. Yeah. The number 13 Miami team, you get it. So now... Here they are with an opportunity to regain their status. Correct. And honestly, it's been a really rough start tonight. Yep. No doubt about it. But still, the first three games of the season, okay, it didn't go the way you wanted it to go. But still, there's everything right out there in front of you. It's been the first quarter of the game tonight. Didn't go the way you wanted it to go. Still, everything's right there in front of you. But either way, they have to figure out a way. 
whether it be tonight or beyond, they have to stop making critical errors in simple moments. Pre-snap penalties, bad, bad turnovers, having holding penalties, things like that that can't happen for teams that have high expectations and high aspirations. Empty look here for Johnson off the timeout. Third down and six. Can they find a first down? Incomplete. He was trying to get it to Anaya Smith. And that was Slusher again with coverage. He has been very active so far. So now four possessions for AM. Four three and outs. Four punts. You can see Jimbo Fisher communicating with the wide receivers. Not a lot of separation there as Slusher made a nice break on the ball. Constantino to punt again. Stevens, remember? In trouble fielding it last time. Fair catch secures it right around the 15-yard line. Fighting spirit moment brought to you by Modelo. A closer look at K.J. Jefferson. And he's off the charts. I mean, so good. Great feel for the position. This particular play that led to the opening touchdown. This is it. Just a play later. Finding Jackson on the tunnel screen. He takes off north and south, finds that front pylon. And then the following drive, slow developing play, finds the deep post over the top to Warren Thompson. K.J. Jefferson has come out and played with great urgency. And this offense has needed him to. As a result, they have a big lead here in the first quarter. Dominic Johnson in the backfield. He's been on the long road of recovery after a knee injury in last year's bowl game. KJ Jefferson able to get to the edge and scoot out at the 20 yard line. It's good to see Dominic Johnson back in there. You referenced him being back in the mix and they are deep at running back. I mean, it was almost like last year they had five or six that could go. Johnson being one of those, a guy that's very physical, can get downhill. And it's a nice compliment to spell Rocket, Rocket Sanders and A.J. Green. Second and five. Take the reverse. Johnson can't find much. Good swarming up front, including Fadil Diggs, the defensive end with the tackle. So far here, these last couple drives, this Aggie defense doing a nice job on first and ten. First few drives, they were giving up nine yards, ten yards a pop on first and ten. Not the case these last couple, and as a result, it's been a little bit tougher sledding for the Arkansas offense. Final seconds here of the first quarter. And they're going to let it hit triple zeros, and why not? They had it their way. Arkansas came out, showcasing K.J. Jefferson. And all that speed. Keytron Jackson had the 32-yard touchdown. Thompson had the 56-yarder. And it's 14-zip, number 10 Arkansas on top. I'm watching the SEC. On ESPN, number 10 team in the country with a two-touchdown lead over the Aggies. And look at what the Hogs were able to do, averaging 8.1 yards per play in that first quarter. 170 total yards to 28 for a and Third down and four to start this second quarter. Big K.J. Jefferson to pass on third and four. But this is where he's at his best, running the ball and slicing through that defense. As they finally get to him at the 35-yard line, Antonio Johnson and Damani Richardson able to corral K.J. Just a great job there by K.J. Nothing open. Just be patient, patient, patient. By a little bit of time, sees that tackle get beat inside, take off, and find some open grass. That ball nearly intercepted. Chris Russell had a shot at it. Very close here. If this was an accurate throw, this is intercepted. But it's way off the mark. You see he's trying to hit Trey Knox, and he throws it probably three yards inside. But if he throws it right on Trey Knox's body, Russell's going to pick that off and likely take it to the house. Very fortunate there for K.J. Jefferson. The break on the ball by Russell. Second down and 10. Johnson. Well blocked and a first down for the Hogs.
great job here. As you see the pressure coming from the field, no one's there on the backside. Johnson gets north and south. Here he goes again, crossing midfield. How about the left tackle on that last play? Luke Jones, like trying to He's find like, work. Who should I block? Downfield. Yeah. Where can I find somebody? <laughs> Don't block the running back. That's the only thing. You, that's the only rule. It's just There's a really good loop. job running away from the overload. 6'6", 327 pounder from Little Rock. Second and two, and now this is exactly what the Hogs do best, Greg. Yeah, and the tempo too. I mean, it just eats at your fatigue. It eats at your defensive front. You can't substitute, so don't get fresh bodies in there. Because you see DJ Durkin struggling to try to find an answer here against an offensive line. And when they get going, they are very, very difficult to defend. This is a spot, too, where Kendall Browse has traditionally taken the shot over the top. Fresh set of downs on the plus side of the 50. Johnson just went for seven. Another first down for Arkansas. That was batted at the line of scrimmage. That was Damani Richardson getting his hands up to deflect that ball. Great play by Richardson. Great play here by Richardson on the late throw. Once it's intercepted, really good eyes there by the safety. Dominion, the freshman running back, return motion. And then they go the opposite way on a counter, a little push pass to Hornsby. And Hornsby is tracked down, pursuing down the line. Remember, Hornsby, the backup quarterback who came in last year against AM for a then injured KJ Jefferson and led the Hogs on their final scoring drive to put them up by 10 points in this rivalry game. He's the fastest player on the field, so they're going to find a way to utilize his speed. Third down and 11. Reverse is bobbled by Hornsby, and AM was all over it. So the defense does their job. Big stand there by AM's defense. It felt like there they were starting to really get pushed. The surge was coming. They held in there just a little bit, and thanks to a couple of miscues there by Arkansas's offense, they're going to get off the field. And now Max Fletcher is going to try to pin him. Checks up inside the five and down at around the seven yard line. So a good job from the true freshman punter, Max Fletcher. The DJ Durkin saying, at a boy, that's how we play defense. Now let's see if that O can get and go. But Oregon comes back to get the win. Bo Nix had 428 yards in that game. Cameron Ward threw for 375. That was a thriller. Worst Aggie starting field position from their own seven. A-chain trying to change that, and he can quickly. Watch out! Can he get the block to the outside? A-chain, mega chunk play, out of trouble, just like that. 63 yards, A-chain. And it's just a great job. You're going to see a block out on the end. But you're going to see the defenders get squeezed inside. A-chain is out the gate. Just a thing of beauty. Terrible job there by Arkansas. Two defenders in one gap, and A-Chain is house call. Told you a little while ago, man, every time he gets the football, you just hold your breath. He's got so much speed showing it off right there. What a huge play for the Aggies giving them life. That's their first first down of the game. It comes on a 63-yard run. Back to business with him. And this time he is cut down at the 25. But boy, did they need that. Starting at their own seven-yard line, needing a spark, without a first down, and he delivers. Really the first time, as you can see, 28 total yards in the first 12 plays. But it was really the first time that Arkansas's defense was out of position. And that one time, all it takes is one time, two defenders out of position, two guys in the same gap, and boom, A-chain's out the gate. A great job of taking advantage of the mistake. Second and five. A chain patient, and it pays off. And look at the tough running after contact. Finally dragged down by Drew Sanders. But Devon A chain is just making a decision right now that he wants to change things. 
He's running hard, too. A-Chain, look, he's not a power back. <laughs> we know that. He's not going to be a guy that's going to just churn out yards. He's 189 pounds. But right there, that was just all effort. Continue to drive his legs. And now has the Aggies knocking on the door. Good work from this offensive line coached by Steve Adazio. They have found the rhythm on this drive. See if they can keep it going. Johnson quarterback run now. As he makes his way inside the 11-yard line, tackled by Bumper Pool. Bumper Pool once again, Arkansas's leading tackler. The offensive line also answering the call right now. It appears as though there was a challenge issued. There wasn't great separation from the wide receivers. Jimbo said forget about it. Clearly this Arkansas pass defense is playing much better today. Let's see if we can get things going on the ground. And as a result, this offensive line has answered that challenge. And they're putting together by far their best offensive drive of the DA. Second and six. Only a couple yards this time as he was backed up. It was Chris Paul and Isaiah Nichols throwing back a chain. It'll be third down and four. A huge down here for Arkansas's defense. You can just leave the field after surrendering just three points after that huge play. You almost feel like it's a win. So a really big down in this football game here. Jimbo Fisher off to keep it on the ground. So does he opt? to put it in the air. I think you have to put it in the air, but I'd throw a little swing route here to A-Chain. I would get blockers out in front. And I'd give it to my speed back, see if he can't catch the edge. Texas A&M is going to use their second timeout. They'll be facing a third and four at the 10-yard line when we return. Last year, for me, this person. We're going to be challenged again, and that's when you find out who you are. A&M go. had won nine straight against Arkansas since joining the SEC. Then lost last year, now down 14 here early. But a third and five after a big setup from Devon A-Chain, a 63-yard run to put them in position. Do they get the payoff now? By the way, A-Chain, bottom of your screen, down there at the 10-yard line, third down and five. Keep an eye on him. I like him in the passing game always. If I can get him matched up, in a favorable spot. He can certainly win in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Doesn't, doesn't matter who's covering it. This offense was sleepy. Now all of a sudden wide awake. Can they cash in right here? Here comes the pressure right up the middle from Arkansas. Showing that A-gap pressure. Will they back off or bring it on Max Johnson? Empty look. No running back to help. Johnson's got to get it out quick. Lofts it to the end zone. And it's a touchdown. Evan Stewart, the freshman. Boy, did they need Delivered, gig him. A chain started it, had the big run. Offensive line responded. Max Johnson on a big third down. They went 93 yards there. They had their worst starting field position and said, we got to make a decision. How bad do you want it? This badly. Johnson, Stewart, cashed in. There is energy in this building now, folks. College Football Primetime presented by Subway is brought to you by Goodyear. Discover the possibilities. Goodyear, more driven. A lot of history between these two. 12th game that they've played here at Arlington. The game's played here. AM leads 7 to 4. Coming together moment is presented by Verbo. A great job here by Max Johnson. Understanding that the protection was overloaded. You have six guys in the protection, and you only have five guys that are capable of blocking. So what do you have to do? You got to shoot a fadeaway three. And I can hear Marv Alberts in my head. Right here, yes, he's got it. All right? 
Just a fadeaway three by Max Johnson. And a really nice throw, a really nice catch too, and excellent concentration by Stewart the freshman. And now Sanders takes his turn, and a nice run for 12 yards, Rocket Sanders. You know, guys, Anaya Smith spoke with Evan Stewart and Chris Marshall following their suspension, and he said this, you may be freshmen, but it's time to grow up. Everyone on this team needs you to be playmakers. Being selfish is no longer an option. He responded well. That's good leadership. Responded well right there. And boy, did that AM offense respond well. Their first four drives, four punts, didn't have a first down. Then that drive on third downs, they were three for three. 97 yard touchdown drive. Really nicely done, too. And you saw the speed and the talent that's on this roster. It's just the execution has been lacking. But if it can all come together, there's plenty of opportunity to score points. Over the backfield on second and eight. Jefferson's going to keep it himself. And just with that size, he goes up against Damani Richardson. I mean, Richardson's not a small safety. He's 6'1", 210, but Jefferson goes forward at 242 pounds and gets those three extra yards. Six-yard run for KJ. It's tough to make comparisons to all-time greats, but he just moves the way he moves. I'm not saying he's not saying this, all right? But he moves like Cam Newton. The way he finishes runs and he always falls forward. He's just a powerful guy that really is an effortless mover with how he carries the football. Third down and two now. Quarterback runs straight ahead. And that's exactly what you're talking about. That power, that ability to turn the pile as he drove Shamar Turner ahead. And Turner's 6'4", 300 pounds, the sophomore from DeSoto. And even if the hole isn't there, it doesn't matter. I mean, when you are 240 plus pounds, with a full head of steam, you can definitely make the defense feel it regardless. Fadil Diggs is down. Starting defensive end for a and And yes, he's a first-year starter, but there are so many you talk to in this program, they would consider him the leader of the defensive line. Came to Texas a couple years ago from New Jersey, and he has been very productive. So why they tend to him, we'll take a short break. Check out our college football studios and update on Ohio State, Wisconsin. It's the C.J. Stroud, Cade Stover show. Here's touchdown number one. Flip over the pylon. Makes it 14-0 and just seconds ago. Watch this. Stroud had the option. Runner pass. Get that stat. More Stover. 21-0 Buckeyes. Stroud is off to an amazing start for Ohio State this year. 8-for-8 eight eight to begin that game. Couple of touchdown passes as they are rolling against Wisconsin. A.J. Jefferson with Rocket Sanders. Offset to the left, and now motioning back is Jackson to the other side. A lot of pre-snap window dressing here as they give to Sanders, and Sanders is wrapped up as that was Chris Russell with the tackle of Rocket Sanders. Three yards for Sanders. So far, the Aggies on defense done a pretty good job tackling here after the first couple drives. Really struggled there those first few, but are starting to settle in a little bit on the defensive side. Sanders on second and seven. Crosses midfield. The third and a long three there. Turner with the tackle. Definitely four down territory, too, too, if you're Arkansas. The way you've been running the football and knowing that you have a 240-pound quarterback, I would definitely hand this one off and you can come right back, run the exact same play on fourth down if you're short. What a luxury to have. Third and three, as he gets it out to his tight end, Bax, who's gobbled up at the line of scrimmage. Good pursuit down the line. Antonio Johnson was there. Jalen Jones was there. Offense staying on the field. Fourth and three. And m 46 yard line. A 
What do the Hogs come up with? Diamond bunch formation, bottom of your screen with Sanders at the back of it. Jefferson, quarterback draw, shakes free, and is going to have plenty of it inside the 40-yard line. Drawing all that attention to the bottom of your screen, and K.J. Jefferson does it himself for eight yards. Yeah, this is really nice. You're going to see just three defenders on that side of the center with three guys to block right outside. And a really nice job by Jefferson breaking a tackle and picking up the first down. Good design there by Kendall Bryles. Anthony Lucas, the true freshman defensive end, was left on an island. Couldn't get Jefferson. Wide open and complete to Hazelwood to the 22-yard line. Arkansas on the go. Sanders bounces off a would-be tackler. Gets to the outside and is ridden down to the 15-yard line by Gilbert. A nice rhythm here now from Arkansas's offense. They'll just continue here on second and short. Continue to hand it off and pose their will at the line of scrimmage. Longest drive of the game for Arkansas. This their 11th play. Inside screen, Hazelwood's free, cuts inside the five, and it is going to be first and goal, Hogs. Kendall Bryles, well-managed drive of play calling here. Quick to the line is Jefferson. First and goal. KJ's going to run it again, diving, fumbles the ball, fumbles the ball, and Chappelle's got it. Tyreek Chappelle in the right spot as he hands it off to Richardson. Here he goes. Wow. Can you believe this? What a turn. Touchdown in the most unexpected way possible. Fumble, handoff, scoop and score. Dig him again. most outrageous way to potentially tie up this game you just saw it Chappelle recovers it gives it to Damani Richardson who says I'm gonna track meet this thing wire to wire fire drill not going to work out. But the Aggies close to one. K.J. Jefferson tried to launch himself from far out. Ball came loose, and D.J. Durkin's active defensive back says, let's make something of it. 16-yard scoop fumble, 82-yard return by Richardson, Greg. And a massive mistake here as you see him extend. Doesn't have the ball in tight to his body. Ball gets jarred around, and Chappelle does an amazing job of finding it. As you can see him starting to extend there, it looks like Russell, number 24, is the first one to get a hand on it. But this is such a heads-up play. I mean, right here, he's totally bottled up. But Richardson said, give it to me, and he does. They hand it off quickly. It's obviously backwards. It's a thing of beauty. Just an unbelievable turn of events and a great play by the Aggie defense. That is just heads up football. That is wanting it. The first turnover of the game goes for an 82 yard return score by Damani Richardson. And give credit to the linebacker Chris Russell for forcing that fumble as K.J. Jefferson thought he was going to be Superman and all of a sudden you got Aggie sprinting the other way. Matt Berry, how about that, my man? Joe Tessitore, it has been a wild day of college football. Coming up in the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report, Florida, Tennessee goes down to the final play. You'll want to see that one, plus Clemson and Wake Forest they needed overtime to settle that one, and we had another overtime game between Texas and Texas Tech.
What a fun Saturday it was. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway joined me coming up at the half. And K.J. Jefferson, who had led his team to a big spark in the first quarter, had the 14-zip lead, a couple of touchdown passes, and then Devon A. Chain for Texas A&M broke the big play. And then moments ago, one of the wildest plays you'll ever see. Absolutely wild as Arkansas was rolling. They had momentum. The fumble scooped, handed off to Richardson, and 82 yards he sprinted the other way for the touchdown. And that's how we have a one-point margin after the blown PAT. Sam Matthews, a backup linebacker who plays special teams, and the highly recruited Smoke Bowie, the backup defensive back, were both shaken up on special teams coverage. So they were slow to walk off the field. I just uh, can't get over the handoff. Wasn't great. I, it reminds me of, of 2005 National Championship game, USC and Texas. And this obviously, the extension right there, bad play. But this, this is the most heads up play ever. Reggie Bush tried to pitch it back. And it was a fumble. It resulted in a fumble. Texas hopped on the ball. It was a huge change in that Rose Bowl game that came down to the wire, became an all-time great. That was about the last time I think I've seen a defensive player try to hand it to another guy. That one not airborne, but just handing it to him. Just incredibly heads up. And a great job, too, by Richardson following his guy and saying, hey, man, let me have it. I love that. Tyreek Chappelle from Philly went to Northeast High, played for Chris Riley as head coach. Coach Riley saying, that's it. Heads up ball. Let's go. First down. A.J. Green now taken down by Diggs. Remember, Fadil Diggs was shook up just a few minutes ago. I'm glad that Fadil Diggs is going to be okay. It looked like he was getting a little stretched out, maybe a cramp or something like that. But you can see the momentum has certainly shifted in this building. Oh. Can't have a bigger momentum shift. Arkansas going in to score. Next thing you know, it's an Aggies touchdown. Jefferson, and he's been running well tonight. He goes for five more. KJ Jefferson with 76 yards rushing already in this first half. 7.6 per. Third down and five. Showing pressure off the edge. We'll see if they come with it with Johnson sneaking up there. There is Diggs ready to launch himself. Play clock coming down, and with that, K.J. Jefferson is going to use a timeout. That is their first of this first half. Coming up tomorrow on Sunday NFL Countdown, one-on-one -on -one with Josh Allen. What a dynamic player he is. And some of the game's great defenders share what it's like to try to stop Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. That's 10 Eastern on ESPN. Monday Night Football is the Cowboys and the Giants. 8 Eastern on ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Plus. And Monday Night Countdown gets it started at 6 o'clock on ESPN. Actually, he was with Saquon Barkley last night. We were doing the championship fight up there in New Jersey with Shakur Stevenson. I look over there, Saquon, front row. Of course, his <laughs> uncle was an all-time great fighter. I ran the blade, Barkley. So Saquon was taken in the fights last night on ESPN. Now getting ready for Monday Night Football against a team that plays here in this place, a place that Sam Pittman said to us just before kickoff. He said, I like it here. We have fun in this place, and I think it's good for recruiting. Of course, A&M has been excellent with recruiting all these great Freshman players loading up that defense, and now let's see what they come up with. This defense with a third and five for Arkansas. Empty set for K.J. Jefferson. As now Johnson comes into the backfield. Back from that long recovery off the knee injury. Third and five, just a three-man rush, and yet they're able to hurry him. And now get after him and bring him down. Chris Russell had the force fumble moments ago, and now the sack on third down for the Aggies. And these eyes are in the backfield all the time. They know what K.J. Jefferson's capable of. Look at Russell, 24. Just keeping an eye on him. Do not let him get outside. And then close. Just a great job there defensively by the second level of the Aggie defense. 
Gets flushed from the pocket, and then boom, you shoot your shot. As a linebacker, when you get that green dog opportunity, and Russell drops the outstanding Jefferson in the open field. A timeout is being used by AM. That is their last of this first half. And how about Chris Russell all of a sudden? Came up big with force fumble, comes up big there. The ebbs and flows in the drama of SEC football. Think about this defense, too. I mean, they're going to put a lot on those linebackers here in the second half because KJ Jefferson's legs have been very effective in scramble drill situations so far tonight. The first 30 minutes, big part of Arkansas's offense has been KJ Jefferson running the football after he drops back to throw. So they're going to have to continue to play really well. So Cooper and Russell, it's going to be an all points bulletin on them at halftime to make sure they don't allow any more quarterback scrambles. Fletcher on to punt the dangerous Anaya Smith to return. And there's a sky punt that Smith is going to call for the fair catch. And he'll secure it at the 31-yard line. A minute 45 remaining for AM, who was sitting in a situation where they were almost down two touchdowns. Next thing you know, it's just a one-point game of you from our AT&T 5G sky cam. Magnificent setting here at AT&T Stadium, of course. AKA Jerry's World, Jerry Jones, proud to be an Arkansas Razorback. National champion back in 1964, beating Nebraska in the Cotton Bowl. Good opportunity here now for Max Johnson. Try to steal some points before the half. First thing is, got to get the drive started. Got to be positive here on first and 10. Number six can help that. Play action on first down. Johnson just going to get it to A chain. And quickly, he gets out at the 36-yard line. And a &M has used up all their timeouts earlier in the half, so they don't have any at their disposal. So you understand that you need to be real mindful of the clock at all times. Try to work the boundary as much as you can, but not doesn't have to be at the boundary right now. You still have, obviously, nearly 100 seconds of clock left. So you can work the middle of the field, but you cannot take sacks and you cannot get behind the sticks. Johnson, complete pass midfield to Stewart again. He had the 10 yard touchdown earlier. Flag is down back at the 37 yard line. Jimbo says, What's that about? I'm calling that on Moose Muhammad, the wide receiver. This was a kind of an interesting play here. As Moose Muhammad looked like he was kind of falling down, but he got in the way of an Arkansas defender. As you can see right here. Yeah, I think that's probably a good call. It looked a little bit more from a distance, like he was out of control. But there he looks like he's a little bit more under control. It does look like he's going low. I do think that's the correct call. And with that, they're marking this back as a second down. Johnson's going to run it himself. He's going to have the line to gain as he slides down. And they will mark him at the 44-yard line. So it's a first down for AM. All the matter. Miles Slusher with the tackle. Got to start getting a little bit more chunk yardage here if you're going to try to start sneaking the field goal range. Johnson just going to hook it up underneath to A chain. Remember, no timeouts remain for AM. They used a timeout on fourth when they came up with the stop on third down of Arkansas before that punt moments ago. Flag is down. They're going to get Moose Muhammad here with an illegal movement. He wasn't set as they were snapping the football. And 
It'll be a 10 second runoff too because AM doesn't have a timeout to preserve it. And the clock was running. There, so it'll take it down to 26 seconds. And now you start to think about how things have been managed in getting the ball back. Part of the snap, ball start, offense. Not all 11 players are set for four seconds. Five yard penalty, three second down. Would have been so nice to have that time out in the pocket. To stop with less than a minute to play in the second period. There'll be a 10 second subtraction from the game clock. You'll need about 20 yards, too, before you're even thinking about a possible field goal. So there's the 10-second runoff. 26 seconds. Ball at the 43-yard line. Four-man rush against Johnson. Going to go downfield. Well covered. And is there going to be a flag? Yes. As Smith got run into by Miles Slusher. A little bit of a prayer there, but you could see it looked like Johnson kind of put his right leg out a little bit. I think that's obviously the correct call, even though many Hog fans don't like it. Now, right here, if you're Johnson, you have to tell your guys, hey, five yards quickly out of bounds because you're right on the cusp of a field goal. But anything tackled in bounds, obviously, short of the first down line, you're not going to have enough time to clock it and potentially get your kicker on to kick a long one got to throw the ball out of bounds here. Johnson goes to the edge, but it's well out of bounds, so that'll only leave four seconds. I don't think they have the distance from here. This would be about a 60-yard field goal, and watching the AM kickers there early on, they were trying them from this distance, but they were going a little bit to the left, so let's see if Caden Davis can actually pull off a long one and see if he can get it done. Now Randy Bond is the starting kicker, but Caden Davis had been. Remember, he missed the late field goal attempt in the upset loss against App State. Just a long of 40. This is from 59, and a timeout is going to be used by Arkansas. I'm sitting here and Watching this game, all of a sudden you think, okay, this is taking standard form here with Arkansas before halftime. Greg, they're coming down the field. They got the big hogs up front, running the ball well. K.J. Jefferson is making plays with his right. arms, and then all of a sudden he decides he's going to go Superman. Yeah. <laughs> the next thing you know, you got Chris Russell punching it out. You got Chappelle picking it up, and right. one of the smartest, just most aware football plays you'll see. Well, and it, the big thing in college football, I mean, turnovers and explosive plays. That's what wins and loses games, ultimately that. So you are going in, you're about to score, you're about to be up 14, and boom, your best player makes a careless decision to try to extend the football from a distance. It gets ripped out, Chappelle gets it, hands it to Richardson, and what becomes a great play for the Arkansas Razorbacks flips on a dime, and now AM with an outside chance after a potentially long field goal to steal the lead at halftime, but it looks like now a and going to put their offense back on the field, thinking twice about the distance. And like I said, I, I was watching the kickers earlier. a and really wasn't close from 60 yards, so I think this is probably the correct decision if you're Jimbo Fisher, especially knowing you have length the wide receiver. So they say, go take a seat on the long field goal, Caden Davis. We're going to launch this thing. And Johnson was hurried, and that had no chance. That was a wild half of football, right? Arkansas comes out, and they are rolling. Keetran Jackson, 32-yard touchdown. Warren Thompson had the 56-yarder. And then A-Chain changed things for A&M. Here's Katie. Jimbo, that fumble recovery and handoff was an incredible sequence that changed the momentum. What did you think of your defense's awareness there? That was really good. It was really good. We got to get some stops, though. They're driving the ball too much, making third downs. And offensively, we got to quit shooting ourselves in the foot. 
we've got every first three drives, we had a motion penalty, a motion penalty. Then we get a good drive here and get a cut penalty, which you're not allowed to cut anywhere. And we're being self-inflicted wounds. Saying all that, we're down one point. And then we drop a snap. So listen, we're lucky to be where we're at. We need to get our composure, go back and make a play. Our defense changed that game. Offense had a great drive, 90-some yard drive. Defense made that play. Now we just got to relax and play. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Coach wants to clean it up, but boy, oh boy, did he love what he was seeing when his defense did this. Jimbo said, wow, go, go. 82 yards, Richardson, 14-13. Here's Matt, Joey, and Jesse. Gentlemen, take it away. One here with ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Subway, the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Arkansas was up 14-zip. Texas A&M came back. They had a failed PAT, and that's why we have 14 to 13. Remember, AM won the toss to start the game. They elected to defer, so they will get the ball here in the second half. The dangerous Devon A chain is back to return. We'll see if he even gets a chance. And he will not moments ago. Katie was with Coach Pittman. What was your message well, to your team? I mean, going in there, we seemed like we were kind of down because we, you know, we're up 14 and had a chance to go up late. We got to forget about that. It, it is what it is. It's realization. We got a one-point lead. What will we do for 30 minutes? What's it, what's it worth to us for 30 minutes to walk out of here undefeated? I think we'll have a really good half. Thanks for the time. Thank you a lot. There's a flag down on that kickoff. Interesting to hear Coach Pittman in assessing his team's mentality after that wild play. Fumble return that was brought back 82 yards by Richardson. It's actually an offsides call, so I'm going to start at the 30. Johnson hit as he throws, and it's incomplete, but a flag is down at the 40-yard line. Evan Stewart was the intended target. Holding defense number three. Ten yard penalty for the previous spot. Includes an automatic first down. And that's Dwight McLeathern, starting quarterback, who gets called for the defensive holding. Hey, what'd you make of Coach Pittman's comment there? It's like, yeah, okay, the big play goes against us, but everybody felt like they were down. Put it yeah. in the pass. Yeah, I get that, though, because you feel like you're about to completely take this oh, game no over. Doubt. And the next thing you know, you're in a dogfight, right? So it's, it's understandable that the mojo of the team was certainly taken away from it there at the end of the half, but they did a lot of good things. They outplayed AM for a vast majority of it. Just need to get back to continuing to execute and quick make mistakes. Max Johnson, good initial burst to charge ahead for a gain of about eight yards there. Jackson comes up with the tackle. Conversely for AM, they can look at themselves too and say, man, we made a lot of mistakes. I mean, whether it be pre-snap penalties or they just didn't get aligned properly or they didn't have the proper protection. But they made a couple huge plays that now keep them in it. So if they can play a cleaner half, they'll be much more efficient offensively. So I think both teams probably kicking themselves going in, knowing that the score could be very, very different. Second and two. A chain is going to move the chains and cross midfield. Bumper pool with yet another tackle. So far for AM, the big reason why this offense has gotten going is with the rushing attack. Much has been made of Arkansas's inability to cover and the struggles they've had in the secondary. Everyone thought this might be the opportunity for AM's passing game to really get going, but that hasn't been the case. Arkansas's secondary has been great, but they haven't done a great job handling a chain who's had a couple of big, um, big moments and expect a lot of opportunities in the second half. Pressure off the edge. A-chain picks it up, and with that, able to get the completion to Green and Green! Breaks free, Donovan Green as AM on this opening drive of the second half down to the 22 yard line already. A good job by a chain coming across the formation and picking up Slushers coming off the left hand side. Was unblocked, but Slusher gets picked up by the running back, which allows Max Johnson to step up calmly and find Green crossing the formation. Just a great job there in protection by the Aggies. 26 yards from Green. A chain testing that right side. And leg drive keeps going as he works his way to the 17 yard line. 
Now coming into this game, Arkansas pass defense was really struggling. Yes, they had the sacks, but then in the back end, they were giving up a lot of yards tonight, only 77. There was only 51 at halftime. Of course, a nice game there a moment ago to Green. So they've done a really good job of making sure the coverage has been tight. And of course, the welcome addition of Miles Slusher there at nickel has been enormous. He's been very, very good in the coverage for the most part has been sound throughout the course of the first half. Of course, they've lost Jaden Catalan, the All-American safety, earlier this year. Second and five. Johnson running out of options and going up high inside the 10-yard line was Evan Stewart. So that is a first down for a and It'll be first and goal. And this just really late getting to it as Johnson throws a heater and Stewart goes up and makes a catch. It's a difficult thing to corral. Look at that ball isn't just tipped up, and sometimes those things get intercepted, but you can see the strong hands of the freshman reeling it in for a nice conversion. Stewart, one of the biggest recruits in the country. Name a player who's in the freshman class, and they're one of the biggest recruits in the country. AM loaded, number one recruiting class in the 2022 cycle. Keep it on the ground here. A chain into the end zone. Aggies take the lead. Their first lead of the game. Devon A. Chain, a nine-yard touchdown, and a very well-managed, good-looking opening drive of this second half for Texas A&M. And a clean operation this time for the extra point. Six play drive to start this second half. Devon A chain squares those shoulders, hits the accelerator, and right in for a 20 to 14 Texas AM lead. Watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. They have had notable thrillers meeting up here at AT&T Stadium through the years. Overtime in 2014, 2015, 2017, and now all of a sudden here, this one has turned into a wild one. 20 unanswered points by a and Let's go back to the touchdown here for Texas A&M on the opening drive of the second half. Just beautifully done up front along the offensive line. Just an excellent job, too, by the center. Bryce Foster and the right guard, Leighton Robinson, just a thing of beauty. But A-Chain's the one that makes this one go. You see all this flow over the top. A-Chain sees that immediately, hits the cutback, and boom, finds his way into the end zone. Just an excellent run there by A-Chain. And a beautiful drive for the Aggies to open up the second half. Rocket Sanders. Tackled right at the line of scrimmage by Brian George. Katie. Guys, before Arkansas's offense took the field, Rocket Sanders had some extra padding taped to his right side over top of his ribcage. He also spent some time on the bike as well. Just something to keep an eye on as we move forward. He's been the workhorse. Second and ten. Tackled for a loss. That entire front right in his face. And it was Chappelle who was wrapping him up. Chappelle, of course, who had... The scoop fumble, and then the handoff to Damani Richardson for the play of the game to this point. Third and 12. Core cadets and all the Aggie fans roaring for a stop. Jefferson extending the play, goes underneath. Hazelwood is tackled three yards shy of the line to gain by Richardson. Really good stand here from Texas A&M's offensive or defensive front. First couple plays, couple handoffs, things they were struggling with in the first half, but not the case here in the second half as they win at the line of scrimmage and they force Rocket Sanders to cut in the backfield, thus slowing his momentum, and they drop him behind the sticks. It sets up third and long. They force K.J. Jefferson out of the pocket. It's nowhere for him to run. He has to throw it and they tackle him short of the sticks. Just an excellent job there by D.J. Durkin's defense. Fletcher on to punt. Anaya Smith back at the 27. This is a knuckler from Fletcher. 
and checks back up to the 39-yard line. Want to remind you, SEC football next Saturday at noon on the SEC Network, South Carolina State against South Carolina. Florida's in action against Eastern Washington on SEC Network+. Plus. These Aggies will be up against Mississippi State at 4 p.m. And then at 7.30, it is number one Georgia taking on Missouri. And, Greg, I will ask you this, and I bet you it will be a discussion on your Always College Football podcast. When you look at Georgia and you see the athleticism of Brock Bowers, the All-American tight end, and you see him running the ball, right. and you see him <laughs> scoring every which way, could he be? the best player on that team. I, first of all, I don't like talking about Heisman in September. He's right? a tight end that does everything. I know, but it, we're talking about the best player, right? He's as versatile a player. He's as good a receiver as there is any receiver in culture. Well, he's as good a tight end as, any, as there is. Give him the ball in space. Let him hand it off between the tackles. God probably be a great running back. Run today. <laughs> Johnson. Incomplete. And Muhammad was wide open. Muhammad had a weight on it. And there wasn't a man in coverage within five yards. Man, the throw really isn't that bad, but watch Muhammad. He kind of stops. He kind of misplays it, doesn't really know, kind of comes up. And then next thing you know, the throw's on him. Hudson Clark is way off the mark in coverage. But you can see Max Johnson saying, just keep running, keep running. This one's on the receiver. It's actually a well-thrown football from a distance. You'd think, man, I can't believe Johnson missed him. But as you see Muhammad kind of gather his feet and not really run through the football, his indecision in tracking the football is ultimately what led to the incompletion. What a huge miss. A chain on second and ten, wrapped up after a gain of two and a half. Xavier Sprini transferred from Georgia on the tackle. He was part of the national title winning team a year ago for the Dogs. Big third down here for Arkansas's defense. You're given the gift on first down. Made a nice tackle on second down. If you can get off the field here, it looks like man coverage from Arkansas based on how they're aligned right now. Third down and seven. Here comes Sanders straight in on Johnson. Trying to keep his balance and somehow does Max Johnson. My my, what a play! Flag is down at the 40-yard line. Johnson went from could have been, should have been sacked to dodging and darting ahead for a big play. And there is his father, Brad Johnson, the Super Bowl champion. Dad had a good arm, didn't have those kind of wheels. Block in the back, offense number seven. Ten yards penalty for the front of the foul. Makes third down. Who's Muhammad again? Man, this is an amazing play by Max Johnson. Feels the upfield pressure, kind of spins into it, then spins out of it, and then makes a guy miss, cuts back around to the left, and continues to get upfield. You can see the penalty right there. As it was pretty bad there from Muhammad. Pretty clear that he's put it, pushing Hudson Clark right there in the back. But man, that was a great play by the quarterback. Looked like he was going to be bottled up in the pre in the backfield because of the pressure. Then he pulled a Houdini and showed us some of that athleticism. Ten-yard penalty puts the ball at midfield, and it is a first down for the Aggies. Johnson going to keep it himself, and he will dive ahead to the 46-yard line. One thing, Dominic with the tackle. One thing I think when the quarterback competition was going on between Haynes King and Max Johnson, I remember watching the spring game thinking, well, I know Haynes King can run. Like, oh, yeah. We know he's got track star speed. But one takeaway that I had in the spring game and really kind of watching Max Johnson progress, I never really saw him take off at LSU. But clearly it's in there. The guy can move. Now, he chooses to operate from the pocket but he is a natural runner as well and can certainly keep you honest with his legs second and six Devon a chain he is wrapped up helmet comes off as he is pushed back by Latavius Brini again they're down in four coming up
Amari Daniels is going to come in for A chain. I think I want you to get here, too. I mean, this could be four down territory for Texas A&M. Like those in breaking routes, and those have been pretty good for them at times, but it hasn't really been there for them today. Let's see if they try to work an in breaking route here to one of these slot receivers against soft coverage. That would pick it up right there, something underneath. Third and four. Here comes the pressure. They pick it up to the outside, cutting back and getting it is Brown. First down, Aggies, Yul Keith Brown. Eighteen yard reception. And that was really nice. They kind of built into a bit of a bunch formation. And then they get Brown out into the flat where he is one on one against Simeon Blair, the defender. He makes a miss in the open field and gets upfield. Ball was a little off target, but a nice run after catch there by Brown. A chain. Speeds to the outside. Flag is down at the 30. We give Robinson, I think, for a hold. Holding offense number 64. 10 yard penalty for previous spot. It'll be first down. Most veteran of their offensive linemen. Yeah, and he's had a nice game so far, but this time he tries to kind of get around the edge, but he hooks the defender. Watch right there as he engages with Zach Williams. That right arm gets hooked up around the neckline of Zach Williams, and the official's going to call that every single time. He's had a nice game, though. I mean, Robinson, big reason why they scored that last touchdown. But there, he just gets a little high and a little bit out of balance with his technique. First and 20 after the penalty. And sack. Ball came loose at the end there. But Landon Jackson, the transfer from LSU with the sack. Bad sequence here. Here's Robinson trying to get to the outside, but he can't get there in time. Watch this. This is kind of a little bit of a messed up look. Trying to go with, looks like a RPO with a quarterback run to the left. But because of the pressure, Johnson has to bail out and try to make something happen. It's just a really tough two-play sequence there for Robinson as he can't engage with Jackson, who's just way too fast off the edge. All of a sudden, it's a second and 30, Greg. I'm thinking screen right here if I'm Jimbo. See if you can't just get it in one of your guys' hands and give yourself a chance at a field goal. Jimbo's going to use a timeout. All of a sudden, his offense is going in the wrong direction. We'll see what they come up with when we return to AT&T Stadium. Don't go anywhere. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Subway is brought to you by Allstate and the Allstate AFCA Good Works team. Recognizing athletes for their charitable work. Visit ESPN.com forward slash Allstate to learn more. Our Taco Bell Live Moss student section. Of course, these sections competing to be the Live Moss student section all season long. And there are the Aggie fans. And mixed in, you'll see the core of cadets off to the side. And there is Miss Rev Ma'am, the first lady of Aggie Land, the highest ranking member in the core of cadets, the beautiful American colleague, Reveille. It's always funny to me every time you see like our buddies a and I'm like, man, I'm so glad Reveille didn't pick my bed last night because I'd have to sleep outside. She gets to have whatever bed, any couch. You stay and leave Reveille alone. Bro, she wears five diamonds on her maroon and white blanket. <laughs> Second and 30 underneath. This is Smith, and here he goes. On second and 30, they convert with Anaya Smith. Now, I understand being conservative defensively, but I can promise you this. I'm not going to allow Anaya Smith to have 15 yards of wide open green grass in every direction. If I can help it. I mean, you can see just how capable he is with the ball in his hands, how quickly he gets north and south and eliminates that second and long to create a first and 10. 32 yards on second and 30 because of his athleticism. A chain. Cuts back to the 12 yard line. 
Sometimes prevent defense is your own worst enemy. And that time Barry Odom in the long second and long in that deep prevent, brought a little twist up front, thought maybe they'd be able to just disrupt a little rhythm. Way too soft. And the Aggie wide receiver, Anaya Smith, takes full advantage of it. James Johnson just made a nice play defensively, second and eight. Johnson to the end zone, incomplete. And he's looking for the very skilled true freshman, Evan Stewart. Stewart was covered by Hudson Clark. Pretty good job there by Hudson Clark trying to eliminate the amount of space between Stewart and the sideline. But as you can see, too, got some contact, but a good job, too, understanding where he's at on the field, forcing him out of bounds. The matchup that they will continue to try to work on is getting Stewart against anybody because he's had a nice night tonight, the talented freshman. This is the 11th play of this drive. There have been penalties, there have been sacks, then there's been big plays. The 32-yarder with Smith. Now this, third and eight, and we got motion. There was tons of movement for Jimbo's team, and this has been frustrating him all night, the self-inflicted wounds. Full start, offense number 76. Five-yard penalty remains third down. It's Feathery, the right tackle. Third and 13. Great view from here at AT&T. Sold out for this rivalry. They're going to hand it off on third and 13, and that just goes for three yards to A-chain. Conservative call there, obviously, by Jimbo Fisher. Then we hit triple sevens on the second and 30. I mean, I want to try our luck again here as the field is condensed. It's a conservative play. A-chain gets dropped. Good. Heads up play there by the Arkansas defense as well. Randy Bond hit his first career field goal attempt last week against Miami. Good ball contact, good rotation, and through. And AM 23 unanswered points, up by nine late in the third. That effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation brings college sports together to recognize, show appreciation for the great teachers across our country. To support Extra Yard for Teachers, you can follow CFP Extra Yard or scan the QR code for more. On with the 31-yard field goal, 23-14. to 14. So much on the line for AM. You said at the beginning of the night, a chance to get their status back, their standing back after the upset loss to App State. Speaking of teachers, Arkansas cornerbacks coach Dominique Bowman, he was a high school teacher, taught phys ed, and he's talked about how much he learned from that experience, how he learned everybody learns differently. And he says those experiences being a high school teacher, that helps him coach in the SEC. In fact, his wife is a math teacher. And he coached up Hudson Clark pretty well here. Yeah, very nice, too, by Hudson Clark. Great awareness where he's at on the field. Young man that has really earned his spot, Hudson Clark has. I've known him since he was nine years old. I'm very proud of that young man, and to see the player he's become really makes me very, very proud. I love hearing that. Rocket Sanders, tackled by Cooper. Well, guys, Sam Pittman told his team, just go be us. We got all kinds of time, and then he turned to his offensive line. He said, we need to be able to run the football. If we run the football, we can win this damn thing. So he's leaning on that veteran group up front. Second and three, and that's exactly what they do. I think that's a good message too, Katie, because if you looked at the first two offensive snaps for Arkansas this half, very passive mm -hmm. at the line of scrimmage, almost kind of trying to play, you know, patty cake. I mean, that's not what you do. And I know Sam Pittman being the old offensive line coach, that's not what he wants to see. Challenging those guys, emphasizing them getting downhill, flat back, and pushing some Aggies off the line of scrimmage. Jefferson on first down. 
Incomplete. Uh, Greg, remember when Sam Pittman turned to Katie and he brought up the mental side of things after that outrageous scoop and score and the handoff that AM pulled off? Since that fumble, Arkansas has 17 total yards. AM, since that moment, 236. Yeah, I mean, it can flip instantly. And I think part of it, I mean, just got to have confidence back. I mean, it was your own self inflicted mistake. AM made a great play. Give them credit. Man, you got to have someone that's going to take the bull by the horns. Sanders on second and ten as he is torn back by Chris Russell. Chris Russell's had a heck of a game. It was Chris Russell who had the force fumble on that magnificent play for the Aggies. And Richardson took 82 yards for a touchdown after Chappelle handed him the ball on a fumble. Let's see if they can create something here for where Warren Thompson. He's at the top of this stack set. Third down and nine, Jefferson incomplete. He was looking for Thompson. And they will strike up the fighting Texas Aggie band, the noblemen of Kyle, as their defense does the job again. And man, I mean, this is good job stepping up. Good job keeping your eyes downfield. Just miss high. Him and Thompson kind of not on the same page. Thompson jumping a little bit too early. And Jefferson just missing a little bit too high. Got to put that one right on the face mask of the wide receiver. Just an unfortunate miss there for the Hogs offense. Sixth punt of the night for Fletcher. And he skies this. Going for big drive. Big hang time. Inside the 10. Well done. Bounces back towards the 13-yard line. What do you say we check in with Matt Barry? Matthew? Let's do it, Joe Tess. Got a couple of games that have gone to the half. Kansas State and Oklahoma. What about Adrian Martinez and the Wildcats going into Norman right now? Kind of bowls his way over to the end zone. Right now it is Wildcats Power Cat 24-17 over Oklahoma. Also at the half, it is all Buckeyes. Mayan Williams off the right side. They lead at the half 31-7. That punt looked like a Greg McElroy gap wedge. <laughs> I don't think he hit it thin, and I don't think he <laughs> ganked it way to the left. So, no, not, not much like my gap wedge there, Matty. Max Johnson, A-Chain, and Smith back out there. A-Chain, look at that shake and bake for a first down. How good is he in short space, Greg? God, he's just got such sudden movements. I mean, so sudden, so quick. And he stops and starts so unbelievably well. I mean, for a guy that's a track star, the way that he can accelerate is off the charts, but the way he gets laterally, I mean, it's not often when you see a guy with that much speed that's that effective laterally, and you can see it every single time he touches the football, just how capable he is moving in any direction. Track speed. Look at his times in the Texas relays this past year. I mean, jaw-dropping. Sixth fastest time in the 200 in A&M history. Johnson, downfield. Incomplete, looking for Marshall. He was covered by Hudson Clark, who we focused in on moments ago. So good coverage there by Clark. He obviously got beat by Moose Muhammad on the post. That time they tried to challenge him again, this time step for step with Chris Marshall. So really good job there by the redshirt junior. As you can see, Jimbo Fisher not happy with Max Johnson's decision right there. Jimbo Fisher calls the plays as he has done his entire career. Recently, he was asked about that, if he would consider giving up those duties. He said possibly. He goes, always evaluate things. But he feels like this offense has been close to breaking out. They run option, and Johnson does so well to the 35-yard line. It'll be third and short. Bumper pool with the tackle. And that is Anaya Smith. Down on the turf, and that is the last thing that Aggies fans want to see. The dynamic playmaker, Anias Smith, is down and in pain. And it's not a good either. I mean, he just gets rolled up so bad. He's down there trying to block out in front. Just gets tackled right into his right leg. Just hope so much that he's okay. He obviously means so much to this offense. Such an explosive playmaker. The senior has done a lot of great things in an Aggie uniform. So 
Oh, he's one of the most reliable players in all of college football. I mean, through the years as a rusher, a receiver, a punt returner, a kick returner. Let's watch the end of this play. As you see, he just kind of gets tackled and rolled oh. in. As that right leg is kind of trapped underneath. Max Johnson's body and, and looks like Bumper Poole's body as well. So, man, just saying a quick prayer for this young man because just hate to see an injury like that. Listen, he is dynamic with his physical gifts, but recently a lot of people pointed out what a leader he is. How he has called out teammates, talking about success of being a matter of want to, of people wanting to be locked in. And you can see he's really struggling to put any weight on that leg as he has helped off the field. Anaya Smith, who just earlier in this third quarter had a 32-yard catch where he made it happen on a second and 30. One of the very best playmakers in the entire SEC being helped off the field. Not able to put a lot of weight on that right leg either. Just sick to your stomach when you see that, man. So Katie will find out the latest with Anaya Smith as he is headed to the medical tent. You got to think here on a third and short with how they've been running the football. It's going to be a Devon A. Chain. Got to think, hand it to him behind the right guard, Layden Robinson, the best offensive lineman, see if they can't get some surge. Third down and two. It's exactly what they do, Greg. And he is met right at that line to gain. This is fourth down. With how they've been playing defense this half, I don't see any scenario where you would go for it, especially in a two-score game. So I think this is the right decision. It's unfortunate that their back wasn't able to push the pile enough to pick up that first down, but a great job there by the Arkansas defense getting off the field on third and short. Constantino, the special teams player of the week in the SEC, on to punt. Bryce Stevens set to return, heels on the 20-yard line, and there was movement Ball as Constantino. Offense number 29, five-yard penalty. It remains fourth down. And set for his first punt since the first quarter. Final moments here of a third quarter. That saw this AM offense find their groove. And that is the end of the third. Arkansas had a 14-13 lead. That has gone away. Aggies, big third quarter as they head to the fourth, up nine. Fourth quarter here at AT&T as you're watching the SEC on ESPN. And this is Stevens on the punt return and Arkansas will begin this fourth quarter with the ball trailing by nine their last points came at 525 of the first quarter they just have not been in a rhythm whether it be running the football or throwing the football they just have looked completely different in the last 20 minutes of this football game KJ Jefferson's been off the mark hasn't been as decisive his accuracy has dwindled a little bit as well the separation by the wide receivers is not what it was and the offensive line is not getting anywhere near the movement they got throughout the first 30 minutes offensive line that they feel they can lean on can they do it now AJ Green and as he gets to the 33 yard line tackled by Russell you also haven't seen the same tempo. Of course, this is a momentum offense. So the better they play, the faster they go. But they haven't really utilized tempo to their advantage at all in the second half. Here they snap with 28 on the play clock. Green again, and that'll move the chains. 
You can expect much of the same. Just run the exact same play. Kendall Brawls run the same play six, seven times in a row. He doesn't care. Especially if AM doesn't make an adjustment on the front to account for that inside gap that they've hit on consecutive plays. Green again. Bryce Anderson with the tackle. True freshman from Beaumont, Texas. Had a big game last week. Remember, Richardson was ejected last week for targeting, so Anderson stepped in, had eight tackles against Miami. The intense DJ Durkin, defensive coordinator for the Aggies. Stood up to it, did green, and made the most of it with two and a half yards. Great job of making something out of nothing, because it looked like Cooper was going to drop him for about a four-yard loss. It's a critical third down here for Arkansas's offense. With how they've run up the first few plays, I'd expect another run play here, even on third and medium. Third and three, Jefferson. Gets it out, quick out, is secured by Trey Knox. Guy who added 30 pounds to his frame, went from a wide receiver to a sure-handed tight end. First down. And a great job. You see the tight end flipping his hips like a wide receiver. The ball thrown off the mark on the out route, on the inside hip. That's not a good throw by K.J. Jefferson to his left. That ball's got to be out in front. But a nice job by Knox making it right. First down, Razorbacks. Hazelwood orbit motion. This could be a pass. double pass. Or it could be a disaster, and it's a sack. Hazelwood tackled for a loss by Shamar Stewart. Antonio Johnson in on the play. Stewart in on the play. And that goes in the wrong way for a loss of five. A really good job here by Texas A&M's defense. I mean, they do not fall for it at all. Instead, coverage is perfect on the back end, and they're able to corral Hazelwood before he could even attempt to throw the ball away. Just wisely take the sack there, but a great job there by DJ Durkin's defense playing their keys and not getting caught by being overly aggressive. Bryce Anderson is down. Medical team out to see him. We'll take a short break. It's a second and 15 when we return to fourth quarter action here. And we can kind of validate what happened last year. Touchdown, Arkansas! Boy, Rocket Sanders having himself a day. Another win is going to be lovely. I'm ready to go. That 10 next to Arkansas's name is being threatened. By the way, this is the first time since 2012 that Arkansas has had back to back weeks in the top 10. But right now, it's the Aggies in the fourth quarter with a nine point lead. This has been a thriller. Second and 15, Jefferson. Bottled up, but gets a little bit of a push towards the 46-yard line. Joe Tessator, Greg McElroy, Katie George with you at AT&T. And Arkansas jumped out 14 zip, and now 23 unanswered points by the Aggies. A big third down here. Let's see real quick. There's a lot of space right here. If you're Arkansas, I might try to work that on a slant with Hazelwood. Third and 10, Jefferson. Gets it complete, but tackled maybe a half yard short is Hazelwood. And with Chappelle, who was there defensively. Chappelle, who had the scoop, fumble, and handoff to Richardson for the score earlier. Here's your fourth down and short. Dominion is the back, and of course, Jefferson, a 242-pound quarterback. Fourth down and less than one. K.J. easily. No doubt where that was going. The quarterback power. Good job there by K.J. Jefferson. Getting north and south, no problem whatsoever. And a great job up front, too, by Arkansas's offensive line. They've had their fair share of ups and downs here in the second half, but they're on arguably the most important snap for this offense, fourth and short. They get enough surge to pick it up easily. That's Shamar Stewart, the excellent defensive end. Who's emerging early in his career for AM. Trainers are out to see him. Arkansas now two for two on fourth down tonight. And there's some voids too. When you look at just how AM currently is structuring their defense, it's like they understand that Arkansas's passing attack 
isn't really trying to work the middle of the field, so they're essentially just giving it away. Almost all of Arkansas's passing attacks either coming downfield or it's on outbreaking routes that are a little bit slower developing. So if I'm Kendall Browse, I'm talking to my guys right now in that offensive huddle saying, hey man, we got to get the ball out of KJ Jefferson's hands quickly on some in-breaking routes because I'll show you when they line up again, there's plenty of room to take advantage of some in-breakers and some slants to hit receivers in space. So Stewart walks off. Of course, the big injury concern, Katie, is their offensive playmaker, Anaya Smith. Yeah, and it's a pretty emotional scene on the Texas A&M sideline, unfortunately, guys. Anias was able to come out of the tent. He's got a boot on that right ankle. He's on crutches. He made his way behind the bench to an embrace by his father. His father visibly emotional. They had forehead to forehead as they embraced. Obviously so upset by the injury. It seems to be pretty serious. Here's Dominion on first down for the Razorbacks. And he maintains his footing and then gives a little at the end to the 17-yard line. Rashad Dominion pushing Jalen Jones away. It's an excellent run there by Dominion, just refusing to go down even as Aggies were pulling from every direction. And now Jefferson on the quarterback run. And he's inside the 10. And this is their brand of football, their style of football. This looks a little bit more like we saw from the Arkansas offense in the first couple series of the game. Expect much of the same with the ground and pound attack starting to feel its pain. The Binion. And this will be a first and goal Razorbacks. This might be a spot two. Especially on first and goal around the five-yard line, you can execute a jump pass. They've used it with success in the past, trying to find Knox, who's on the end of the line of scrimmage. You might be able to find him and release him vertically, especially knowing how much this AM defense is likely looking for the run. Jefferson keeps Jefferson strides right in. Thirteen play scoring drive at a critical juncture here in the fourth quarter. Arkansas's first point scored, Greg, since the first quarter. In a desperate, gotta have it situation, the Arkansas offense got it. Dominion getting things started, kind of really showcasing what this drive was all about, the refusal to give up, the refusal to go down, continuing to fall forward. And then the star quarterback on the zone read feels collapse onto the outside. He gets to the edge and finds pay dirt as Arkansas has life here in DFW. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Subway. Try the all-new Subway Series menu. Your pick of 12 irresistible subs. How about that giddy-up leap by K.J. Jefferson into the end zone? And let's just look at the 11 rushes on that drive, Greg. <laughs> That's who they are, man. I mean, just stick to what you do well. And I think the challenge was clearly answered there by the offensive line because the surge was much better throughout the course of that drive. Of course, Sunday NFL Countdown comes your way tomorrow. Going to be one-on-one -on -one with Josh Allen. That's 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. And then Monday Night Football. The team that calls this place home, the Cowboys and the Giants. 8 o'clock on ABC, ESPN, ESPN Plus. And Monday Night Countdown gets us going at 6 p.m. Those Giants are 2-0. Of course, the Cowboys owner right now has a rooting interest in the team trailing by two. Most prominent alumnus. Jerry Jones sitting in his box. Just over 10 minutes to play. And what has been a thriller all night long. A wild one between the Aggies 
and the Hogs. John Daly's Hogs. That hat that simply says Pigs. His son plays on the golf team in Fayetteville. Max Johnson. That was blown up. Never had a chance. They had assignment football, and then they had Eric Gregory just slice it in there. Just a really good job here by Gregory. You're going to see him just beat across the face. It's exactly what happens. Ogumbi, the left guard, number 74. He's the backup left guard, but he's in there tonight. And a nice play there by Gregory, forcing the speed option to be dropped for a big loss. Second and 12. Low snap. Johnson able to pick it up and then get rid of it. And on the other end to A-Chain, and they're saying it's a catch. Officials meeting, one said catch. And can you believe that? No, you can't. They get together and say he was out. So close right there. Is the ball secured? And where is that toe as it's coming down? That right foot. His bumper pool is forging a chain out. Does it get down in bounds? One official thought he saw it did. The other coming in to overrule him. Third down and 12. Ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. The receiver did not come down in bounds. The previous play is under review. So they're going to review it. Play is officially under review. It's really close right here. Where is the foot? Yeah, it's so tough to tell exactly where it comes down. Of course, it's called incomplete on the field. So everything that you see in these replays must be indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt to overturn. Right there, I can't tell exactly where the foot is relative to the sideline. It's a great effort. And it's a great, great play. Right there, you can't see it either. Well, let's bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin, and forget what you see. Sometimes it's more about what you can't see because you have to have the indisputable video evidence, Matt. Yeah, you're exactly right, and Greg nailed it. Without a shot right down the sideline, you just can't tell. Looks like he might have dotted the eye with that toe, but it could be touching the white. The ruling on the field is incomplete. I don't see anything to overturn it. And the other thing, too, and obviously I don't see enough to overturn it. I think it's going to stand, and that's going to be where it is. I feel like the Aggie sideline would be going absolutely berserk if they felt like it was inbounds. You know, you, know, you can't use that as as an indicator okay. in the replay you, your review football process. and practical IQ but can. Practical football yeah. intelligence would tell you. I would think that on that sideline they'd be hooting and hollering, throwing towels and helmets and water bottles in the air if they felt like that was dropped After inbounds. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It's third down. So I think. That's the correct call. There's not enough evidence to overturn, but either way, you got to tip your cap for the effort. So it stands as incomplete. Third and 12. Huge play right here for the Aggie offense. Just kind of lost some of the momentum in the game. And now an opportunity to secure it back by picking up a third and long. I don't hate the idea of getting A-Chain out on a little wide route here and see if you can't throw it to him. Third down and 12, pressure. Johnson gets rid of it and able to get it to Green. Donovan Green saves the day for the Aggies. First down, Texas A&M, 16 yards. Wow. I mean, what a great catch. Does he secure it? Looks like he does. Nothing there to indicate that it was an incompletion, but just a prayer there by Max Johnson as he was getting hit by two Arkansas defenders as he released the football. What a big play by Johnson. Remember, he had pressure right in his face on a touchdown in the first half as well. Does it there. A-chain gets around the edge, hits the speed. 
He's different. Few guys can do that. Simeon Blair had to track him down. 24 yards somehow. Just how quickly things can turn. A third and 13. Unbelievable catch. Great play by the quarterback. Even though it was a bit of a lucky play as well. But they make it. Next thing you know, A-Chain, he gets an opportunity. Nearly scores with it. This would be a shot right here. If I'm Jimbo, I'm taking a shot over the top. I know you're running it well. See if you can't rock into sleep and throw one over their heads. Remember, without Anaya Smith, their best playmaker on the outside, Max Johnson with time. But well covered downfield and then taken down by Gregory. Eric Gregory with the sack. That is their third of the night. A great job here by Gregory. He's really working against two Aggie defenders. They try to take that shot, trying to throw it over the top. They just run out of time. Nothing really open downfield as Gregory drops Johnson there as he tries to step up. It's great effort there by Gregory, the nose tackle, but excellent job there in the back end by the Arkansas secondary, not allowing anyone to get behind the defense. Johnson going to tuck and run. And Bumper Pool able to corral him at the 36-yard line. That clock is going to count down under seven minutes. And AM with that two-point lead as they roared back. They fell by two touchdowns. And then 23 unanswered points before KJ Jefferson cut into it. Right here, right on the fringe of field goal range. This might be a spot where Barry Odom says, hey, man, we need to try to come after you a little bit and knock you out of field goal range. Because at this point right here, as you can see, that green line, very, very close to it. Maybe you see a blitz from Arkansas's defense. Here it comes. They do. Johnson stands up to it, incomplete. So Barry Odom, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas, comes up with the call that gets the stop. Right there, if I'm Max Johnson, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm thinking I'm right on the fringe of field goal range. The only thing I can't do is take a sack, because if I take a sack, I know we have no shot of trying to kick a field goal there. He just decides to lose it against the pressure that Arkansas was bringing, so a good throw away, but a nice call there by Barry Odom, forcing the ball out of the quarterback's hands a little quicker than he wanted it to come out. Randy Bond steps out there. His second game as the starting place kicker. This is going to be a long attempt of 53 yards. It is no good. Wide left. Six and a half minutes to play. Arkansas football trailing by two. Jimbo has seen a lot through the years. Sometimes that body English, does it help you lean? No. Football primetime presented by Subway. Great game here at AT&T in the Metroplex. 23 to 21, a and on top. Johnson with the carry. Makes his way to the 39-yard line. Antonio Johnson with the tackle. Remember last year, Arkansas snapped AM's nine-game win streak in this series. The Aggies were knocked out of the top 10. Now here's Arkansas in the top 10, trying to maintain that status while AM is trying to get back to where they feel they belong after their upset loss to App State. But if you can grab a big win against Miami, a big win here against Arkansas, things change. And look at this defense. That was Shamar Turner, the first to get to K.J. Jefferson, and now a third down awaits, Greg. Yeah, and a nice job there by D.J. Durkin, bringing pressure off the edge and really not allowing Arkansas any answers there with any quick hit throws to the right-hand side. Huge third down here for this Aggie defense. They need to be really mindful of K.J. Jefferson's legs. Done a pretty good job, especially here in the last two quarters, two and a half quarters, of not allowing K.J. Jefferson's legs to extend drives. Can't allow it here on third and long as well. Three-man rush. Jefferson trying to extend the play. Gets it complete for a first down. As he goes to Matt 
Landers, the six foot five transfer. Jefferson took a hit, but did he deliver? Cooper came in on him. And a nice shot, too, by the offensive line. Just a four man rush here by AM. Jefferson buys time, buys time, and then finds Landers open up over the middle on the scramble drill. And now Rocket Sanders. 10 yard gain. See what Jefferson earned it, too, because as he delivered this football, mm. it's a good, clean hit there by Edrin Cooper. Right to the midsection of the quarterback, and those hurt the worst because you are completely open to contact as you release that football. But a good clean hit there by Cooper, and an excellent throw there by Jefferson back across his body for the conversion. Four and a half minutes to play. First down. Jefferson going to tuck and run, and that is what he can do so well. Another 10-yard chunk for the Hogs. He lowers the shoulders. He gets that momentum, and he's so difficult to stop. As you can see, Arkansas has really gotten back to their bread and butter these last couple drives. 15 run plays in their last 18 offensive snaps. You can expect much of the same here. No reason to go away from it. It's clearly working here late in the ballgame. So Kendall Bryles, outstanding play caller for Arkansas. He sticks with Sanders, and Sanders will get it down to the 16-yard line. Antonio Johnson with the tackle for the Aggies. And that clock continues to go down. And as DJ Durkin thinks about that call sheet opposite Kendall Bryles, they met up in a thriller last year. When it was DJ at Ole Miss and Kendall at Arkansas. And 51 points were scored against DJ's Ole Miss defense. A little different tonight, isn't it? Second and five. Pressure look from Texas A&M off the left-hand side. But now after Arkansas has made an adjustment, does A&M make an adjustment, bring it off the right. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, and it's a bad snap. Ball is loose. A Arkansas has it. You saw that edge pressure. They came with the cat blitz. The snap wasn't a good one from Stromberg. Sanders recovers it as Jefferson was struggling to control it. What a hold your breath moment for the Hogs. Yeah, just stopped a little bit. Looked like it was a little to the right. Didn't seem like anything that Jefferson couldn't corral. Yeah, oh, never mind. That ball's way low, as you can see. Good job there by Sanders being able to reel it in. In this spot, too, no reason to get it in a hurry. Did see a second and 30 conversion earlier in the game, though, so crazier things have happened, but being asking an awful lot here in a critical down and distance. Timeout used by Arkansas. Of course, they have an outstanding sophomore kicker in Cam Little as well. He has a career long of 51 yards. And right now, the ball on the 25 yard line, only trailing by two. College football rankings are brought to you by Verbo. As you can see today, if you're in the top 10, things are pretty good. With the exception of what's going on here in AT&T Stadium with Arkansas, who's clearly trailing right now, but in field goal range with a critical third down coming up. Hey, let me ask you a question about a team just outside that top 10. Tennessee is a team with this razor-sharp offense. Hendon Hooker looks phenomenal yeah. playing quarterback. There was a thriller against Florida today. They won it 38-33. to How dangerous is Tennessee? Very. And they did so today, remember, without their top offensive weapon. Right. Cedric Tillman not available for Tennessee, and he is a complete difference maker. So be able to score 38 points against a defense like that, even without one of your best playmakers, that says an awful lot. That team's going to be dangerous down the stretch. Third down and 14. Wonder if they go with that little tunnel screen that they've scored on a couple times here. See if they can't squeak one to one of their talented wide receivers. Well, they go from the stack release to Hazelwood in the slot with motion. Third and 14. Jefferson's going to run it himself, and he is tripped up from behind that time by Edrin Cooper. Let this clock go all the way down. Take another 30 seconds off the clock. And then try to get themselves a one-point lead off the boot of Cam Little. It's 
Sam Pittman, what a turnaround. It has been his third year. 2020 was his first season. Remember, they had lost 20 straight SEC games. And then four and seven. And then last year, that breakthrough win against Texas. And then beating LSU. AM in this rivalry game. Outback Bowl against Penn State. And now a top 10 team. Minute 35 remains. KJ Jefferson has been terrific the last couple drives, Greg. Yeah, it needed to be, too, because they were really in a hole there offensively. Hadn't done anything until the last couple drives, but he's done a great job of being decisive in the run game. And when he's run the football, he's gotten north and south. And here's one of the few throws. Extending a play to his left and finding Landers over the middle. Nice, excellent throw, as you can see, running tough there. And they've had a good plan for him. They bottled him up for the most part. These linebackers for AM have been off the charts good, but he's found a way to give his team a chance, and that's what great quarterbacks do against quality competition. So it's going to be a 42-yard attempt to take the lead. Eli Stein's the snapper. Reed Bowers the holder, and here is Cam Little to take the lead for the Hogs. It hit the top and rains down into the end zone. That hit the top of the upright and dribbled back into the end zone. When you thought you have seen absolutely everything, this could be what decides the game. Never crossed, never went in, and just sputters to the ground. How you like that, Jimbo? We'll finish this thing up with, I'm sure, more drama when we return. AM is looking to bleed this clock, and Cam Little is going to be thinking about that one for a long time. As he attempted the 42-yard kick, got under it, over rotation, hit the top of the upright, and bounced back into the end zone for a missed field goal. A field goal attempt that would have given Arkansas the lead, and you got a feel for the young man who's had just a great go of it, landing over 81% of his field goal attempts in his Arkansas career. Katie. Well, as you guys could imagine, I mean, Arkansas players are gutted. They're in disbelief. I mean, Ricky Stromberg, the starting center, has been crying on the sidelines. He's now got a towel over his face. They're distraught, guys, and rightfully so. Can't believe it. Stromberg, who is a first-team All-SEC center, who has given so much to this program. A senior. He leads that offensive line. But go back and look at this kick by Cam Little. And watch how he strikes the ball as he gets under it, bleeds out to the left. That's the over rotation that gets the ball going to the right. Then it hits the top of the upright. Now, if it went over the upright, the official underneath it, the judgment call would be no good anyways. But it could have bounced in and been a made field goal. Bottom line is it was not struck well and not driven with good rotation and a target line to give them the lead. As A-Chain... Takes it ahead, and he has a career high. And then, of course, Greg, the key play of this game. Absolutely outrageous. Yeah, 13-point swing immediately. As K.J. Jefferson's going in on the quarterback power, it gets ripped from him. Chappelle grabs it, wisely hands it off to Richardson there along the Aggie sidelines, and he takes it the dis distance. You think it's going to be seven points in favor of Arkansas? Instead, it's six points in favor of Texas A&M, and that flipped this game into overdrive throughout the rest of it. Score was about to be 21-7 Arkansas. Instead, it was 14-13. There was a failed conversion as well there. And then all the drama we've had in the second half. And the last time out used by Arkansas. A&M, excuse me, A&M. Well, listen, at the top of the show here, I turned to you, Greg, I said, what does this mean for AM? The opportunity to say, yes, okay, App State happened. But then there's number 13, Miami. You grind it out, you find a way, 
And now here's a top 10 Arkansas team. Yeah. Of getting your status back. Yeah, and, and by the way, it was far from perfect for AM tonight. Right. I mean, they had a ton of mistakes in the first half of this football game. But ultimately, the mistakes that Arkansas made were more significant. And the first time really this season, the mistakes, which have often, oftentimes really led to victory or defeat for the Aggies in the first three games, well, they were on the right end tonight. And they didn't play great by any stretch, but they did enough on defense to be able to disrupt Arkansas's rhythm enough in the second, third, and fourth quarters to be able to hang on for your dear life. I thought it was a really, really gutsy performance from AM because there were times tonight where you felt like this thing might get away in favor of the Razorbacks. Oh, right up until the point in the second quarter when Devon A. Chain had to have that 63-yard run. They were lifeless offensively. They didn't have a first down until that point. And now Max Johnson takes a knee. And that will do it. It has been a wild rivalry through the years here at AT&T with all the overtime games. But this one matched it for drama and wackiness. And you just have to feel for that young man, Cam Little, whose field goal attempt that would have given Arkansas the lead bounces off the top of the upright and back down into the end zone. Outstanding performance from A-Chain with 155 yards on the ground, a career high. Gutsy performance by the AM defense. And Katie is standing by with a winning coach, Jimbo Fisher. Well, as Jimbo said, we like to make it interesting, and the guys in the booth called this a gutsy performance. What did you think of your team's ability to outlast? We are gutsy. We play hard. We just can't have the self-inflicted wounds. We had a chance to put things away. we got to learn to keep some poise and execution. But listen, the fight, the heart, the guts of these guys, to be able to come out here and do that, and the drives in the second half, the defense made this, the change in play. In offense, we got to scroll with it and get there. You could have finished at the end. But we're getting better. We just got to get better quicker. You said that you were happy to have two ranked opponents on the schedule after the App State loss. Why? Because I want to find out who we are. I think it gives a chance to really stand up and find your guts. And we've got another one next week in Mississippi State who's a great team. That's a hard place to play. I mean, so we needed those challenges to find out who we are, and that's the best way to do it. Thanks for the time. Congratulations. Thank you. He mentions at Mississippi State next week, obviously, that Mike Leach offense with a veteran quarterback, but an offensive line that has had some struggles, and they're going to have a challenge facing D.J. Durkin's Texas A&M defense. But then remember all offseason with all the controversy, the comments and the barbs back and forth between Saban and Jimbo over the recruiting in NIL. Everybody was circling the date with Alabama. Right. That's in two weeks. <laughs> and the way this A&M team is gaining some confidence, maybe that juice is back for that game. Yeah, but well, let's not let's not talk about that one right now, all right? Because I know A&M fans are sitting there thinking, hey, look, yeah, we're excited about the A&M game too. But sure. And, you know, Mississippi State got us last year. so right? That's so, right. There's business to be done. I, I, there's a lot of things still in front of them and a lot still to accomplish. Difficult game next week, like Jimbo referenced. But this was, I mean, a and season really has been about mistakes. I mean, they have had shortcomings. They have had mistakes, self-inflicted mistakes, errors, fumbles, turnovers. You name it, they've had it. Tonight, they were able to weather those mistakes and still found a way to win and capitalized on the other team's mistakes as well. So I think if they can bottle this up, be a little bit cleaner, they'll be in good shape moving forward as they get into the heart of the SEC schedule. I think you're going to have one of those plays that you'll see over and over and over when Chappelle gave it to Richardson and went 82 yards. This was the turning point. 82-yard return by Damani Richardson. Utah and Arizona State are coming your way for Katie George and Greg McElroy and the entire crew. I'm Joe Tessitore saying enjoy the rest of your night and thanks for spending time with us here in Dallas.